This is uh, for the folks at uh, Candela, and uh, that's Candela Research Center, and anyone else that is interested. Uh, we've now done a few tests with some props on this Candela motor test stand, and uh, we found out uh, some pros and cons about it, and we just want to discuss that and uh, get that on record before we forget everything we did. Uh, what we did, and you can probably look at it in the little video clip from uh, our test, was we had basically two props and we tested it on this uh, 35 size motor from Hobby King. It's a 3536 uh, pro, uh, prop drive motor. Prop drive 3536. It's got a big 35 written on the side of it. And uh, we tested that with these two props and we have some thrust readings and uh, amperage readings that we posted in the last video and uh, what we found out was that it was more efficient with the larger prop and uh, that's where this stand comes in pretty good like for example on my Skywalker if you look at the Skywalker plane it's a pusher prop and the prop is sitting right above the uh, fuselage in the back so you can only fit so large a prop on there so you could put a bigger motor but then you'd have to go get a larger prop for that motor to be efficient so the question is if I put this motor on my Skywalker could I could I get the full use out of this motor and what we found out from the test was no, no because <laughs> we need a prop this big to make this motor efficient on the Skywalker. Either that or it would have to be a smaller three blade prop. But the prop that works best on it won't fit because it hits the fuselage. So I'd be wasting my money to put this big a motor on the Sp Skywalker. I'm probably better off with a smaller motor on the Skywalker. So that's one reason testing Or like a that. smaller but faster motor. That's right. You can whirl a small prop faster, you can get about the same as whirling a big big prop slower. Well, that's very true. Yeah. Well, a lot of times when you design uh, a power system, you might pick out the propeller first, like on the Skywalk, you might say, well, this is the biggest one I can fit with the biggest pitch. Now, what motor do I use? And that's where this would come in handy. You could try different motors and find out where you get the maximum efficiency like for your money. Like you can use a 9 by 8 prop where it has an 8 pitch instead of a 6 pitch. Exactly. You could try different 3 blade props that have the same size and different pitches and see if any of those would give you more efficiency. Yeah. You can also test out your ESCs to find out, uh, that's over here, but find out which ESC is going to work the best for you. Without going to poof on you. And, yeah, or getting too <laughs> hot and uh, measuring the amperage and getting the thrust down here on the scale. So, and then we have the tachometer because, you know, different motors have different RPM, so there's another issue. You can find out what battery you want. Like, this prop might be not too efficient with a three cell because it doesn't have enough voltage to spin the motor up to speed, but you could put a four cell on there and see what happens. Maybe you'd get enough thrust at that higher speed. Or you might even go to a 5 or a 6 cell, but you could find which battery gave you the best uh, efficiency without vibrating the heck out of the system. So that's <laughs> another thing you could do. You know, your prop might fly off. We had an issue with that in our last test where it just flew off. And I think that <laughs> must have gone a country mile. But there was too much vibration. We had fun with that one, though. Yeah, it's lucky you caught the prop because I never would have found it. <laughs> and uh, one thing we noticed about this stand was that we had to drill a hole in the motor mount here. It'd be nice if the uh, product came with a hole already drilled right in the center position because that would not only allow the motor to sit the axle to stick through, which this motor has an axle that sticks backwards, but it would also get your motor centered where you knew where the center was. So it'd be nice if it was pre-drilled with a hole. Yeah. And another thing too, the bearings were a little wobbly. You might have noticed that already. They were kind of a little slack. 
Yeah, there's, but, a, there's a bushing there, but... Um, but now, the bearings there are plastic and they have no ball bearing properties to them. Yeah. It'd be better if they had ball bearings or roller bearings. Roller bearings can come in wider widths without having such a big ball on them. That's right. You could use a, a through axe or, or a through bolt that goes all the way through and through the bearings. Yeah. And that would and then just have a little socket wallowed out in the wood for the bearing to slip into and the bolt would hold it on there with a washer. So that could be an improvement, just better bearings. Yeah. And I also wondered about, you know, what if you did want to test a pusher prop? Uh, it'd be pushing it away from the scale, so... Well, for that you can just reverse the motor and put the prop on backwards, you, you could. think. But yeah. that'd be kind of mm -hmm. non-standard, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm wondering if it might be good to have another slot back here where you can move the motor mount back here and put the motor facing the other direction so yeah. you could push into the scale. Yeah. And of course some people say that the air, when you have a standard prop, the air flowing back over the surface of the test stand affects the test, affects the readings because it's yeah. that air resistance. And, that, and for that reason they say that a pusher test is better than a polar test. Yeah, but then there's those that argue to say, well, if you had it on a real plane, there'd be air going over the nose of the plane. True, yeah. So, you know, there's both sides to the argument, but it would it'd be nice that the stand had both capabilities. That way, depending on, you know, which uh, prop you have, which prop you have mm -hmm. and which, uh, you know, conclusions you have about it, I mean, both schools could use the same device. Both yeah. schools of thought, you could use the same device. Yeah. So, That'd be kind of Oh, handy. and another thing that'd be good is if you not only had this size and you were think right here we heard about you were thinking about making a bigger one, but make some smaller too, because a lot of people are into the ultra micros and the sub sub sizes, you know. Yeah, micro and ultra yeah. micro. So you might want to make a stand that's similar, but maybe a little smaller and a little, one even smaller than that for the really really tinies. Yeah, I think you find nowadays there's an awful lot of electric flying pilots and they're getting into these smaller planes and you yeah. probably find as many of them as you will the gas powered yeah. planes now. So. And another thing I just thought of on the spot here is what if you want to test a helicopter setup? You couldn't use a stand like this, so that could be a selling point for you. You could actually make one that pulls on the lever over here for a helicopter and you can figure out what blades and what motors you need for a helicopter. Yeah, that's certainly a consideration. And, yeah. uh, I don't have many helicopters, but nah. even <laughs> mostly small ones. I mean, you could even put a quadcopter on there if you wanted to find out. Yeah. I mean, if you had something like that. But that's a little, you know, beyond our scope. Yeah. It was, it was just a thought. Just food for thought, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, another thing was um, we had some you know, concerns about putting a gas motor on here because we thought it might be flammable or at least the electronics is in the way and the, if you have like an, a nitro powered motor the stuff would spew all over it so yeah and you know, it could go woof on you <laughs> so we were, we, you know, I don't know what would happen to my tachometer for example uh, with a nitro I don't know where that stuff would go all that mist that comes spraying out of it yeah. A gas motor probably wouldn't be an issue, but, you know, I was wondering how to do that. And also, there was no place to really mount the tack. We just Velcroed it to the side so it pointed out there. I guess yeah. that's okay. I mean, there could be, like, a plate that comes out here that you could stick it on. Well, I hope I don't break this. Or the uh, table. Or the table, but, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That that was just some things we were thinking yeah. about. One, one consideration for it on the tachometer, you could put maybe another hole above where the motor would be to stick the tachometer into. Yeah. So you just have it right near the motor and that would give you the best results probably. Yeah. And like if you had a real right short here. propeller like this on it, you would still pick it up. Yeah, that's true. But you know, one thing about it though, on the uh, pros, I mean we've been picking on it a lot, but I mean the pros yeah. is it's very sturdy. <laughs> yeah. We weren't worried about it flying apart for sure. Yeah. It's very now, sturdy. Other, other than the bearings being kind of slacky, it, it was pretty, it is pretty sturdy. But because the bearings are slacky, it tends to lean a little bit. Yeah. But and you know it it was easy to assemble too. 
I mean, we found yeah. it very easy to assemble. Even we did find it that find out that the parts were a little bit of a tight fit. It might be in favor to actually loosen the fit just a smidge, enough to where you can get it to still do the gluing part correctly, but not too much tight to where it'll like you have to hammer it in real hard or anything. But you know, a few taps with a hammer after you got the wood glue on yeah. it, and it really went together pretty fast. Yeah. And there was a, just a, you know, virtually no screws, as you can see. Yeah. It just all fit together. There was no screws. Easy to assemble. The only screws Oh, and I think really we now screws. just figured out, it's I think just I just easy. now figured out why they want, why y'all want the stand like this. With this, with this in the back. Yeah. Just so you can get to this screw right here. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah, it's <laughs> easy to get to that screw because this does stick out enough where you can get through and screw it in. Yeah. Now if you had this around backwards, it'd be this little plate here would be in the way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah that was that was a good thing. Yeah. And, but all in all I thought it performed very well. Uh didn't have too many uh issues with it at all. And uh we just want to thank Candela for sending this for yeah. uh testing and review because uh it did Yeah you know, fit some of our purposes that we were looking for. And by the way, about my little board that I made for this, um, I have a video prior to this, prior to the last video where we were trying it out. And uh, that one didn't have the remote button like it does now, but all it did is just started it to the back. Mm -hmm. But um, that one kind of describes some extra features on it's on my channel and uh, I'll put a link to that to your video under yeah, this so that yeah. people can review it and that was actually used for a previous test stand that we built and it was for the ultra micros yeah so it was kind of a slap to death yeah slap you'll together see that job, stand but, in the movie if you look at the movie yeah. you'll see that stand it's much smaller than this one it's for smaller motors. even yeah. it'll even do the little one cell yeah, one motors. cell three, one cell brushless, right? Yeah, very tiny yeah. little brushless motors yeah. like the APO3 or uh, APO2 motors. Yeah, from used Hobby King to, again. We found the five by three props work the best yeah. on those. But uh, yeah, you can check that video out and look at look at his test stand that he built. It's a little yeah. smaller one, and that might be something that Candela would like to do is make a smaller version. Yeah, I already mentioned that, but yeah. Especially for people who are scared to try the big one, they could get the little one tried on their little planes and yeah. then move on up. Yeah, so that's an idea. But uh, yeah, and really for the smaller one, you don't have to use thicker, the same thickness of plywood. You go thinner and thinner for each size down. Yeah, I don't know if there's any other t materials. I think yeah. I saw on your site that there was uh, some plexiglass or acrylic yeah. material you were using. But that looked kind of, you know, weak because it. First of all, the one, it was kind of thin, and second of all, it was kind of wobbling and shaking everywhere. So that was probably just a prototype. We understand that, but uh, it'd be better if it was like made either out of fiberglass or aluminum, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that would solve the flammability because fiberglass they use that for perf boards and electronics because all it does is scar a little bit. It doesn't actually catch on fire. Yeah, I don't know if the laser would cut through that, but. May, it might work. Yeah, it might work. So anyway, well, thank you, and uh, we'll see you on the tube. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah.